This is a getting started tutorial showing you how to create the teddy bear head that you can see here. Using a vector file that we've created in the software, we're going to use the vectors to look at modeling the teddy bear head using the create shape modeling tool. And then to finish off, we're going to look at how you'd set the part up ready for machining. So let's just go to file, close. So let's start by opening an existing file. So here we're going to open the teddy bear vector drawing file that you can find in the project folder. And here you can see we have a set of simple vectors that were all created using the circle and the ellipse tool. And the mouth has been edited to create the shape that we can see here. So we're going to look at selecting each one of these vectors one by one and we're going to look at using the create shape tool where we're going to create components that make up this bear's head. So that we can easily select the vectors and see what's happening while we're creating the shapes, we're going to look at tiling our windows using this option here that will tile our windows vertically. That way we can see the 2D view on the left hand side and we can see the 3D view on the right hand side. And so to build components, we come over to the left side of our interface where we can click on the modeling tab. And so the top half of this tab is where we have access to all of the tools to enable us to create and edit 3D parts. And at the bottom here, we have what we call our component tree. And this is where our components will be displayed here. And the result of the visible components and their combined modes will be shown in the 3D view. And that's what we'd call the composite model. Now, as we have no components in our tree, we don't see any model here in our 3D view. Now, before we go ahead and create any components, let's organize our component tree levels. So by default, we always start a job with level one. Now, levels are a way for me to organize my component tree where I could change the name if I wanted to, along with the combine mode. So let's rename this level and we can do that by right clicking on that and that will display this menu here. We can use this option to rename the level and that will highlight the text for me to then input new text. So we can just call this one base as we're creating the model bottom up. So we're going to create the base shape first. And when we create that shape, it will be added to this base level. I can also change the combine mode of a level and to change how it interacts with other levels. Now, as this is our first level, we have nothing to combine this level with. So we'll just keep this set to add. And we'll talk more about combine modes later on in this tutorial. And for this example, we're going to exclusively use the modeling tool create shape where we're able to create shapes from vector outlines. So we're going to click on that and that's going to open up the create shape form. And so this tool allows us to assign a profile to any given vector or vectors that we select. So what we need to do is select a vector. In this case, we're going to select this vector here. And then we need to assign a shape profile that we want to apply to this vector. We've got six options to choose from. We've got a curved profile, angular profile, concave profile, smooth profile, a flat profile, or we could look at creating a custom vector profile. Now, as we are working with organic shapes, we're just going to go with the curved profile in this example. Then what we could do is specify an angle so you can type a precise value in here. So in this case, we'll just go with 30 degrees. If you wanted to add a base height to that, we can do, and that just applies vertical height underneath the actual shape that we're going to create, as indicated by this graphic here. And then we have various options for us to control the shape or height that we've got here. So here we can set that to no limit, 
we can limit that to a specific height, we can scale it to an exact height, we can blend to inner vectors if we had two vectors selected, and we could look at using the sweep option also. Now in this case, we're going to go with no limit in here. Working on down, if you wanted to add in a tilt, we could add in a tilt here by checking this box and setting the angle, and that applies a angled base height, again, as indicated by this graphic here. Then we can select how we want our component to combine with other components. So we've got add, we've got subtract, we've got merge high, and we've got merge low. In this case, we're just going to use the add option here. Then we can give our component a name and to do that, we simply click in the box and we can just highlight that text using our mouse. And then we can simply give that a name. So we're just going to delete out that text and type in some new text. So we'll call this one face. And once you're content with the settings that you've got here, you could then go ahead and press apply. And so you'll see in the 3D view, we now have a shape. And if I just click in the 3D view and move my mouse, you can see that I'm able to move that plane and I'm able to look at the shape that we've just created based on the vector we've got selected, the shape profile we're using, along with the angle and the final height settings. And that's what we're seeing here in the 3D view. So we can put that in Z like so, and then when you're happy, we can simply close out of the create shape form. And so here we can see that this face component has been added into our base level. And if I select that, you'll see that the component here is highlighted. The component grayscale that we have in the 2D view here is also highlighted along with the component in the 3D view that's also highlighted there. And then we could move it and we can edit this as an object in its own right. So let's just click in the white area just to deselect that. And now we're going to look at creating the details for our teddy bear face. So we're looking at the eyes, the snout, the nose and the mouth. So to help keep our part organized, Again, let's go in and create a new level. So to create a new level, we simply right click on our base level and then we can insert a new level. So we've inserted a new level by default, it's called level one. To organize it so that it better relates to our model, we're just going to rename that. So we'll right click, use the option rename level and we're going to call this one details and then we can click to accept that. And we can see that this level is currently the active level because the text is displayed in bold. And anything that we create now will be added into this level. And the combine mode of this level is currently set to add. So any components that we create now in this level are ultimately going to add on top of the face shape that we can see here that's in our base level. As anything in this level will be adding on top of this level. And that's exactly what we want. We want the eyes and all of the face details to sit on top of this shape. So let's go back into the create shape form to create the details for our teddy bear face. So we'll start by selecting the snout vector. Again, we're going to go with a curved profile and then we're going to look at giving this a particular angle. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be typing in exact values in here, but you do have the option to use this slider to determine the angle where you can review how the shapes will look instantly here in the 3D view. So in this case, we're going to go in and we're going to type in 35 degrees. But as I say, you can use the slider. I'm just going to use the space bar to update that and we can see the result of that here in the 3D view. 
Okay, working on down the form, we're going to set it to no limit, we're going to set that to add, and then we're going to give this component a name. So we'll call this one snout. And then we can just apply just to apply those settings. And then we can move on to our next shape. So without going out of the form, we can just use this option here to start a new component. And so now we can select the next vector we want to apply a shape to. So here we'll just select the nose vector here. Again, round profile. We're going to give this an angle of 60 degrees, no limit. Set that to add, we'll give that a name. We're just going to call this one nose. We can press apply and we can see the result of that here in the 3D view. It's looking pretty good. And then we can simply go ahead and start a new component. So next we can look at selecting the eyes. So we can select this one here, hold down shift to select this vector here. And whatever settings we apply here, it will apply those settings to both of these shapes where we create one individual component. So with those vectors selected, we're going to go with the curved round profile. For the angle here, we're going to go with 40 degrees. We're going to set that to no limit. We'll call this one eyes, and then we'll press apply to accept that, so it's looking good. And then we'll use the option to start a new component here, in which case we can take this mouth, and we've got that vector there, curved profile, and then in terms of the angle here, let's just increase that to 50 degrees, no limit, give that a name, we're just going to call this one mouth, and then we could go ahead, press apply, and take a look at that in the 3D view. Okay, so generally it's not too bad, however, I feel that the mouth may be better represented if we had that set to subtract, so it's going inside of the snout rather than raising above that. So to do that, let's just switch this over, and we're going to set that to subtract, and um, we can see straight away that does look much better there. Okay, so we'll just close out here. And here we can see the components have been added into our details level. And all of these components are adding on top of the face. And that's what we're seeing here in our composite model. So next up, we want to look at the ears. Now I want these ears to actually blend in to the face shape here. So to do that, we're going to right click on the details level where we're going to insert a new level. We're going to right click on level one. We're going to rename this level and we're going to call this one ears. So the ears is currently adding on top of the details and the base. So we want that to actually blend in with this shape that we have here. So to do that, we're going to right click into the combine mode for that level, we're going to set that to merge and anything that we add into this level is going to ultimately merge in with our current composite model that we've got here. Okay, so with that level, the active level, let's go over into the create shape form to create the ears. So let's start by selecting the outer ear vectors. So with that vector selected, we're going to hold down shift so that we can select another vector here. We're going to go with a curved profile here, whereby we're going to put in an angle of 40 degrees, where we're going to set the final height to no limit. We're going to give this component a name and we're going to call this one ear and outer. And then we can simply go ahead, press apply, and we can see the result of that. And we can see it's actually merging and blending in to our current shape. So I'm happy with what we've got there. So we could go ahead and start a new component. And then we're going to take the vectors that represent the inner ears. So with those selected, let's go round profile. This time we'll just decrease that angle. We'll make that a little bit shallower, so 35 degrees no limit. This time we're going to set the combine mode of this to subtract and we can give that a name. We're going to call this one inner ear and then we can simply press apply to see the result of that there. 
Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So we'll just put that in Z. Now that we've done creating our shapes, we can close out of the create shape form. Okay, so let's just take a moment to review the components that we've got in our component tree and the levels and their combined modes. We're just going to see how it's ordered in order for us to see the composite model as we do right now. So let's just switch off the visibility of all of these levels. We can do that by using this checkbox option here that just unchecks the visibility of everything here. Okay, so what we see here is our modeling plane. We currently have no visible components, and so that's why we're seeing this as we do. It's just the modeling plane that's in view here. And then if we just put that in Z, so the first thing that we did was we created a level called base where it's set to add, and inside of that level, we created a component called face. And if we just switch on the visibility of that level, we can see that the level is adding on top of our modeling plane. And the component inside that level is also set to add. And so it's just adding on top of the modeling plane as we see it here. Then what we did was we created a second level called the details where we wanted to create the shapes for the face details, the eyes, the snout, the nose and the mouth. And so we created a new level that adds on top of the base level. And so if we switch on the visibility of that level, but then just switch off all of the components in there and then just work with them one at a time, we started with this snout component here. Okay, now as this snout component is in a level that is currently adding on top of the base level, that's why we're seeing this snout adding on top of this base shape. Then we added the nose and the nose is adding on top of the snout and we can see the result of that there. Then we added the eyes, so the eyes is going to add on top of this face shape. And if we switch on the visibility, you can see that there. And then we created the mouth where we wanted that to subtract into that snout shape. And we can see the result of that here as well. So we can see that recess here. We just put that in Z. Then we went on and we created the ears. So we set the combined mode of the level for the ears to merge so that the ears would blend in to the face shape. And so if we click on that, we can see the result of that here. So we've got the outer ears blending in to that face shape. And then we've got the inner ear, which is subtracting into the outer ear. And ultimately, it's all blending into the face shapes. So let's, so let's just see what would happen if we altered the ears level and we changed that from being set to merge to then setting that to add. So we could right click, go to the combine mode, set that to add over here. And you can see this is how our part would look if those ears was adding on top of the face. And this really isn't the look that we would be after. And so that's why we set the combined mode of this level to merge so that it blends in with the rest of the shapes. And we can look at editing each one of these individual components. We can select it, we can put it into transform mode, we can move it, we can size it, we can then look at rotating those parts. There's lots of power over the individual shapes that we have created. And there are many editing tools that we have access to in order for us to make further changes to the shapes that we've already created. So let's just go ahead and undo those changes. So we could go to edit, undo rotate, undo size, and then undo move. So now we need a single vector that's going to represent the area that we want to cut that we can use as a boundary vector. And that will contain the toolpath that we're going to calculate. And so what we could do is we could look at selecting all of our components 
by selecting the inner ear, then holding down the shift key on your keyboard and select the last component in our component tree. And that will select all of those components there. And we could look at using this option here to create a vector boundary around those selected components. Now, as we have a set of good vectors here, if we welded them together, it would create the perfect outline in order for us to create our toolpaths. So to do this, we're going to use layers. Now, layers are a very good way in order for us to manage our 2D data. So we're going to select this vector here, shift and select this vector and this vector. And then we're going to right click here and we're going to say copy to layer, new layer. And we're just going to go with layer two and then we could go ahead here and press OK. And if we go into our layers tab, you can see we've got layer one and we have layer two. If we switch off the visibility of layer one, you'll see that we just have the visibility of layer two switched on and those are the vectors that we copied over. Now it's worth noting here that what you see in the 2D view does not affect what you can see here in the 3D view. This is always derived by what you can see in our component tree. And so what we can see in the 3D view is the composite model. And it's always defined by the components that we have visible, the order that they are in the list and the combined modes of the levels and the components. Okay, so let's just go into our layers tab. I'm just going to make layer two the active layer. And then we're going to go into the drawing tab where we're going to look at welding these vectors together. Okay, so with those vectors selected, we can go into this weld tool. And when we click on that, you can see it's welded those vectors together. And we're going to use this vector for our toolpath boundary. So now let's go ahead and switch over to the toolpaths tab. So you can see the software has opened up the toolpaths tab on the right and has temporarily closed our design tab on the left hand side. We can still access that by hovering over each one of those tabs. We can pin them out if you wanted to using the pin option. However, in this case, we're not really interested in any of these options at the moment. We're going to focus on the toolpaths over here on the right hand side. Now, before we go ahead and create any toolpaths, we must first check over our material setup. And this is where we relate the virtual setup to the physical setup that we're going to apply to our material on our CNC machine. So we use the set option here, and that's going to open up the material setup form. So starting at the top, we just want to confirm our material thickness. So here we are working with three quarter inch material. Next up is our XY dating position. So this is where we tell the software where on the machine we want to set the X zero, Y zero. Now this doesn't matter in terms of the fact that it's really a personal choice where you set this, but lots of people prefer to set this in the lower left hand corner because that's typically the way most CNC machines are referenced from in the lower left. That way the X and Y values will always be positive but you should always pick one that's suitable for your own machine. Then we specify where we're going to set our Z0. In our case, we're going to set that to the material surface. Moving on down, we can specify where the model position is in relation to our material thickness. So here we can see we've got a model thickness of 0 0.5987. So we're just going to look at rounding that number up. So we're going to use the set option here. And that's just going to open up the set model height form whereby we can enter 0 0.6 in there. We could go ahead and press apply, close out, and you can see that that's updated that there. And so we can move the model position in relation to our material thickness by using this slider. And you'll see the graphic has a lighter area here that represents our model in relation 
to our material thickness and we can move that wherever we like. Now in our case, I want to just have a very small gap above our material. So I'm just going to type in a precise value here of 0 0.03 in there. So we've got a little bit of a gap above, which helps to avoid any flat spots when we come to machine this, for example, if your material could be slightly uneven. And then we're going to have a gap below our model of 0 0.12. Next, we need to check over our rapid Z gaps above the material. You want to check your clearance and plunge settings, ensuring that there are no clamps or hold down methods that are going to be in the way here. And then you want to set your home and start position along the Z gap above your material, ensuring everything is safe and appropriate. So then we're going to go ahead and press OK. So now we're ready to go ahead and create our toolpaths. Now, typically when working with 3D parts, you want to create two 3D toolpaths minimally. So you're going to want to create a 3D roughing toolpath that enables you to use a larger tool to hog out the majority of the material. And then you use a 3D finish toolpath, which uses a much smaller tool to pick out the finer details. So we've got our vector boundary selected and this is going to govern the area that we want to create our toolpaths. And so what we can do is with that vector selected, we can go over into the 3D roughing toolpath. And so the first thing we need to do is select a tool that we use to machine this out. We can use this select option here and that's going to open up the tool database where you can select the tool to use. In this case, I'd like to use the quarter inch end mill, so we're going to use the select option to choose that. Let me specify the machine and limit boundary. Okay, so we can choose the model boundary, material, selected vectors, or the selected level. In this case, we're going to use the selected vectors as we've got a good vector boundary for our model already created. Then what we want to do is want to look at creating a boundary offset. Now, as we're working with positive shapes, it's a good idea for us to input a boundary offset so that the center of the tool doesn't just come up to the vector. And what it's going to do is it's going to come past this vector by the amount that we put in this offset section here so that it can cut down the sides of our model. So a good offset to use is typically the radius of the tool plus the machining allowance. So we're going to go in here and we're just going to put in 0.18 in there. Then we're going to set our machining allowance to be 0.03. And this allowance is just a skin of material that the software will leave on the model to protect the finish so that the larger tool doesn't chip at the surface of the finished part. Next up, we need to select the roughing strategy. In this case, we're going to go with a Z level strategy, whereby we're going to profile that last, and we're going to set our angle to be zero, so it's parallel to the X axis. And then what we can do is we can give our toolpath a name. And so we're just going to call this one 3D roughing bear, and then go ahead and press calculate. And then the software will automatically open up the preview toolpaths form where we're able to see our part in the 3D view. And all of these blue lines represent the path that the tool is going to take to cut this out. And we can preview this where the software will animate the roughing toolpath in a virtual piece of wood. And so we can just slow the speed down here and then what we can do is preview that toolpath. And what we see here is exactly what we're going to get on our CNC machine. And so we can see that it's created a lots of steps here where it's hogging out the material. So it's safe for us to go back and create a finishing pass that will cut the part out using a smaller tool. So let's just put that in Z. We're just going to close out here. Now we're going to look at creating the 3D finished toolpath. 
So with the vector still selected, let's go into the 3D finishing toolpath. So to start with, we need to select a tool. I can already see we have an eighth inch ball nose here from my previously last used tool. Now that's the tool I actually want to use. So we could use the edit option just to check over the settings and we can make tweaks to the settings that we've got here. And it will only apply those changes to this particular tool path and it won't have any effect on the settings that we currently have stored for this tool within our tool database. So I'm happy with the setup that we've got there, so we could just go ahead and press OK. Then we specify our machine limit boundary, so again we're going to use the selected vector here. And then in terms of our boundary offset, so we're just going to make this a little bit larger than the radius of the tool. And so we're going to go with 0 0.08 in this case. And then what we could do is we could apply an offset strategy or a raster strategy. So we'll go with a raster strategy here where we can adjust the angle. So we're going to put that at zero degrees. So it's parallel to the X axis. And then we can give that a name. We'll just simply call this one 3D finish bare. And then we'll go ahead and press calculate. Okay, and again, we can see the toolpath lines here and it's opened up the preview toolpath form where we could go ahead and preview that and you can see that all of that detail is coming through here it's looking pretty good and at this stage if there's something that you don't quite like here then you can make further edits to your toolpath and that's the beauty of this toolpath preview is that everything that you see here is what you're going to get when you go to machine this out on your CNC. So we'll just pop that in C. Okay, so I'm happy with what we've got there. So the last and final toolpath we need to create is a profile toolpath that's going to cut the bear out of our material block. So we're going to close out and we're going to go into the profile toolpath. So the first thing that we need to do is specify our cutting depths. So the start depth for this is going to be at zero, which is our material surface. Now we need to cut all the way through our material. Now we know that our material thickness is set to three quarters of an inch. So we can just type in three quarters of an inch in there. Okay, so then we're going to go and select a tool. We can see currently we have a quarter inch end mill in there and I'm happy to use that. And then if we take a look at our passes, we can see that it's actually going to cut this in eight passes. So if we go to the edit option here, we can see that the current pass depth set for this particular tool and this tool path is 0.1. So we're just going to increase that to a quarter of an inch. We could go ahead and press OK. And the changes that we make here only apply to this particular toolpath and it doesn't affect the settings that we have set for this tool in our tool database. So we could go ahead and press OK. And so here we can see now it's going to machine this in three passes here. So let me select how we machine the vectors. In this case, we want to go on the outside of these vectors. So we're going to use the outside option. Now I'd like to add tabs to my toolpath. So these tabs are just little pieces of material that will connect from the teddy bear's head to the rest of our material block, just to hold it in place. So you'd use tabs if you didn't have a vacuum hold down, for instance. So to add tabs, we check the add tabs option. So here we could specify the length of the tab. So we'll just go 0.5 here and a thickness. In this case, let's just go with 0.1 there. We could use the edit tabs option whereby we can then specify a constant number of tabs. So here we could say we want three tabs. And then if we use the add tabs option, the software will automatically add those tabs in for us. And we can see they're represented by these yellow squares with the letter T next to them. Now, if you didn't like the position of them, you can click them to move them like so. You could click them to delete them if you wanted to. And if you wanted to add in your own, you could just click anywhere on the vector to add in your own tabs. Now in this case, we want the software to do that. So we'll just say add tabs and you can see that they've been positioned there. So I'm happy with those. So we'll just go ahead and press close. 
So then we could go ahead and give our toolpath a name. So we're just going to call this one profile bear cutout. And then we can simply go ahead and press calculate. And if we maximize the 3D view, we can take a look at that there. Okay, so if we just put that in the ISO view, we can see the passes there. We've got three passes. And if we go ahead here and preview that toolpath, we can take a look at the part. So we can see those tabs. We've got three tabs there. And then what we'd do is we'd just look at manually removing those tabs once the machining process is finished. Now, as I mentioned before, it's very important that your part looks correct at this stage as the toolpath preview shows you an accurate representation of what we would see on our CNC machine if you was going to go ahead and run these toolpaths. So if something doesn't look as you wanted it here at this stage, you can go back and make edits to the toolpaths and recalculate them until you are satisfied with the results that you can see here in the toolpath preview. And that's what makes this toolpath preview such a powerful tool. So let's just close out here. So at this stage, it's probably a good idea for us to actually save this file should we want to come back to it and make any changes at a later date. So let's go to File, Save As, and then we're just going to give that one a name. So we're just going to call that Teddy Bear Getting Started, and you can access that from the project folder. So now we could look at saving our toolpaths into a format that my CNC machine would understand and cut the teddy bear head out. So let's go over to the Save Toolpath option. So here we have various options to save our toolpaths. At the top, we've got a selected toolpath. And so when I click on a selected toolpath, you'll see that the name updates here in the toolpaths to be saved list as per the toolpath that I've got selected. Then we have various options to output visible toolpaths. So if we switch on the visibility of all of our toolpaths, we could look at some other options. So let's have a look at what happens when we use the visible toolpaths to one file. So here we're actually displayed an error and it's telling us that the visible toolpaths use different tools and we know that. And that the selected post processor that we're currently using does not support tool changing. Now I don't have an automatic tool changer, so I can't make use of this option when we're using different tools. If you was using an automatic tool changer, then you could use this option and you'll be able to save out all of those different tools. Now, in our case, we can make use of this option here to output visible toolpaths to multiple files. And so the software will create a file for each one of our toolpaths. So we're going to do just that. So for demonstration purposes, we're going to save that to our desktop machine that uses the post processor G code. And you'll need to ensure that your machine and the post processors for that machine are used here. And you can learn more about machine configuration and saving toolpaths in the related video section for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and save those toolpaths. So here you can see that the software has automatically pulled the name of our first toolpath in the list. In this case, we're just going to call this one Teddy Bear, like so, and then we can simply go ahead and press save. And then when we go ahead and open up our folder, we can see here that the software has named all of our toolpaths, starting with Teddy Bear, and then we have the 3D Roughing Bear, we have the 3D Finishing Bear, and we have the Profile Bear cutout. And I can take each one of these .tap files over to my CNC machine to then run them and cut the bear out. So let's just close out. So that really completes this getting started guide on using some of the modeling tools in Aspire. We've looked at how we can create the toolpaths and then ultimately looked at saving out our toolpaths. Thank you for watching.